I can't believe it. The greatest minds of our galaxy, all dead and gone. Gentlemen, science was just set back a hundred years. Oh, cry me a river, sister. You blew up the planet with that little experiment of yours. You don't know what you're talking about. That mistech you saw was responding to the spatial disturbance that split the planet in half. Nothing more. She's right, Ace. Shut up and stop trying to look smart. We've got bigger problems. Engines are dead. Navigation's kaput. And who knows where that cinder spike put us. I can reroute the auxiliaries to pump up life support, but that'll only buy us about two weeks. With any luck, we'll drift into a populated system before food runs out. What are we gonna turn to then, man? Try not to go crazy. <laughs> Is it you, John? No, no! He said it wasn't in the Wu Chan system. Ha! That's 20 questions. You guys lose. So, what was it? Anachronox. Man, you guys are dumb. <laughs> but you said it started with a U. Yeah, I know. Anachronox. <laughs> uh, we cried for a while. And I said, if you don't think it's love, then leave. And was it love? The exact words were, it's love, but it's not in love. Oh. Very nice. Are you sad? I'm all right, pal. But you don't have a home anymore. I haven't had a home since I was 16. I'm okay, pal. Really? Bah! Bitch. <laughs> day nine? Bust out the violins. Try day 300. <laughs> this is one of my favorite cutscenes. Look, you left a sock over there. Over there. Is it so hard to pick up after yourself? What? I was gonna pick it up tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? You son of a... <laughs> Should we stop them, man? Let them kill each other. Eat it! Eat it! Eat it! Eat it! Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That looks inhabited. Step back, sister. Are you kidding? I've been waiting a long time for this. Hopefully kill them. It's handy to have that little bracelet. Whack. That one's gone.
can I cook or what? The spatial disturbance that splits under in half must have activated my mistake. And if I'm right about its properties, this isn't the only slag that's active. I think every slag of mistake around the galaxy can now release the energy that's always been dormant inside it. It's a bit of exposition here. We were drifting in space for a few days before I noticed that my pocket was glowing. It was a slag I keep with me for sentimental reasons. I didn't want to jump uh, to conclusions until I could test it out in an open space, but I was pretty sure I knew what it meant. I've been anticipating this for most of my adult life. So, if the coast is clear, I want to share my thoughts and findings with everyone before we move on. Let's use that worktop over there. Right, exposition. This should only take a few minutes, so humor me and pay attention, you're gonna love it. It appears that you need three things to cast mis mistake. The first and most obvious thing you need is a slag of mistake, such as the one I employed so effectively in battle just now. As you saw, this one creates a damaging fire effect. For lack of a better name, let's call it fire slag. If my speculation is correct, different slags have different powers, so we'll have to experiment which, with other slags we run across and test their effects. More on that in a minute. The second thing you need in order to cast mistake is an energy source. Once again, surprise surprise, the theories in my book were correct. The glowing rodents, or glodents, originally find, found on Hephaestus along with mistake, were not a coincidence. An alien technology related to mistake, maybe even the mistake itself, must have irradiated the glow dents as an energy source for the slags. Mistech consumes them as easily as our shield cells do. This means energy is our ticket to using mistech. Okay, now the last and most important element in casting mistech is you. Mistech needs a conduit to channel out its awesome energy. Without a person to cast it, mistech is nothing. The slag can somehow read the caster's emotional condition based on var various metabolic changes, determining the outcome of the casting in the process. Think of it like a super advanced lie detector. I call it galvanic response polarity, <laughs> of course. Intense fear and anger may trigger one function, while panic and concern may trigger another. For example, the same fire slag can both burn an enemy and extinguish a burning friend. Just as a bane slag that normally hurts an enemy will heal if cast on yourself. Miss Bowman, Mr. Boots is looking a bit funny. <laughs> In other words, Mr. Boots, all you have to do is get mad at bad people and feel worried about friends. Mistakes should take care of the rest. It's as easy as just wanting to use it. By the way, this may interest you, Mr. Metavastros. My studies of glowdent consumption indicate that the speed in which they are used increases the power throughput of the mistake. Uh, you can use glowdents at rates of 1, 2, 4 or 8 times the input level of the device. So basically, uh, the more damage you want to do with it, or the more healing you want to do with it, the more energy it will use up. Fatima, can you project that binary level graph we discussed in the shuttle? It's vaguely like valent shells of electrons. The energy flow locks to certain steps or stages, each twice the cost of the last stage. Beyond eight times the ba le base level input, certain values approach infinity, so that seems to be the hard limit. No doubt, Doctor. No doubt. Perhaps you might summarize for the layman in the big coat. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> in a nutshell. Whatever the energy cost of operation is at its lowest level, the next level will cost you twice as much. Not only that, but I suspect higher level devices may have lower level effects built in, such that different power levels might produce different effects. Got it? Good, because I'm done. Was that so awful? We're all taking part in a grand experiment, people. Keep an eye out for more mistake and snap up all the glowdents you can. So that's why we've been collecting them. We're gonna need them. So we have been collecting our glowdents. Uh, let's uh, save. Because we haven't saved since we've come out of uh, the Rainbow Sanctuary. And uh, yeah, my dreams have come true. Yeah, we did come here to uh, check if Mistak had any 
dormant power in it. Mm-hmm. Yep, we will. Anyway, I guess this vindicates me in the scientific community. Too bad there's no scientific community left. Whoever or whatever caused that disturbance is responsible for the death of six million people, and there's nothing to suggest it won't happen again. Here, these shield cells should give us a little protection from whatever lies ahead. Come on, let's get off this rock. Right, let me check what shield cells did she give us. Pre-owned one, I had one extra, so... Did she give us any extras? No, just a package. Let me check. Colossum shield cell. She's got a fire slag. Aha! I must have overlooked it in here. No. Sorry, uh, pal. Right, as far as I know, you can only take three people at once. I don't like this place, makes me feel... F yeah. Uh, I'm just... Uh, I do want Dr. Will Bowman here, this... Uh, let's leave... Um, Pal behind for now. You can always come back and pick him up. Alright. Hi there. Welcome to Votown. My name is Kieber. I am cultural attaché and diplomatic liaison for the hospitality committee. Please accept my sincerest apologies on behalf of the Democritus High Council. Those sentry rowboats should never have been on active duty. By the time we realized our mistake, the automatic tractor beam system was already locked on your shuttle. Yes. Well. I'll have to cut my greeting rather short. The High Council just called an emergency session, putting the entire administrative staff, myself included, on full alert. Feel free to roam the city and make yourselves at home while we resolve this emergency. I'll be in touch. So, the High Council seems to be the top brass around here. Maybe if we talk to them in person, we can convince them to repair the shuttle so we can get the hell out of here. Right. You there. I give up. We've been at this for hours. Maybe if we cut the feed wires. We've been through this already. It might disarm them, but we'd lose control entirely if they ever came back online. I'd rather not. <laughs> right. What's this? Is it meant to be floating? Your ship. Oh, I'm afraid all our resources are divert diverted at the moment. Our crews will work on it as soon as they're free. Alright. There's more of those... Um, thingies rowboats huh. when all the enemies on the field are the same ones it can be a bit hard to tell which one you're targeting Because it's not always as simple as left uh, to right as I've noticed. Oh. 
Interrupt, but I just dug up some interesting info on this dub. Formerly known as Tevolin 2, the planet of Democritus was made up of hardline isolationists before the sudden fall of Emperor Deucalion last year. They've only recently become interested in interplanetary relations. The whole planet is run by a committee. They are extremely bureaucratic, with an elitist class living in a ring floating around the planet and a working class that has been relegated to the surface. Limited access visitors report amazing technology, but none of it is allowed to be exported. Either that helps or it doesn't happen. It was interesting nonetheless. So we're in the ring area where the upper class resides. And it's this way. I'd stay out of the hangar bays if I were you. Those malfunctioning rowboats will kill you without care. Hell, I'd be a good neighbor and invite you inside, but nobody's allowed in the council chambers when there's an emergency meeting in session. <laughs> Look, I'm sure your business is all very important, but the High Council's in the middle of a very important emergency session. I can't just knock on their door and sweep you in. They're very serious about not being disturbed. Only allies of the council are trusted inside. So how do I become one? In order to see the council, you must gain their trust. And in order to gain their trust, you must prove you think like them. Why don't you vote in today's election? If you're of like mind, they will consider you an ally of the council. <laughs> I don't want to anger them. Sounds easy enough. Where do I vote? I believe the closest voting station is outside the Votown Administration Center. Take this hallway all the way down and you'll end up in the city district of the ring. Just ask for directions. You'll find it easy enough. So yes, we need to vote like them. Doesn't sound very uh, much like a democracy. But who am I to judge? All right. Okay. Hey there, you. You better register to vote and get voting buttons. Otherwise, people will think you're planet dwellers. Okay. Wouldn't want anyone to think that. Vote tonight. Vomit torture proposal. These ballot initiatives are quite challenging. I can't decide how to vote today. Well, have a nice day. Happy voting, as they say. Well, well, well. Look at the time. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, seem to have been... Yeah, you can read this. Whew. Last month, Council News Nightly broadcast a five-part series about the failure of cyclical vomit torture as a humane method of capital punishment. Ugh. They claim that not only is vomit torture an unusually cruel form of punishment, but the death penalty itself is a failed system founding, founded on incompetence and racial prejudice. Such a condemnation by the mainstream press moved the Democritus High Council to add an initiative to today's ballot called Proposition 2, which would abolish cyclical vomit torture as a form of punishment for the first degree murder committed by planet dwellers. Their own stance on the initiative is unsurprisingly positive. We're not animals, says Councilman Hal Halpert, Section 8. I can't speak for the whole council, but I will personally vote yes. Polls close tonight at 10 o'clock. So we've got one vote. Does that get noted somewhere? Does it seem to? You don't look like you're from around here, are you planet dwellers? No, we're from all over the system. 
Have you registered to vote? Judging from the absence of a voting button on your sleeve, I'd say not. Here's the deal. You have to pay a loony if you want to stay and vote. A piece. Really? Ooh, okay. All the guests of our city must participate in our democratic process and all voices will be heard. Since today is an election day, you must vote. And in order to vote, you must pay me a loony to register you. Vote or leave. But we can't leave. That's not my concern. You're required by our laws to register yourself to vote. Okay, okay. Of course, yeah. Here are each of your voting buttons. Wear them proudly on your sleeve. Since you haven't any Democrat and ele electronic voting devices, I shall give you a sample ballot on paper. Read it carefully. Alright. So, what propositions are there? Proposition 1. Shall the maximum ramp angle throughout Votown be 45 degrees? Yes or no? Proposition 2. Shall the... Shall cyclical vomit torture be abolished as a form of punishment for first-degree murder committed by planet dwellers? Well, we just saw that the council man would be voting uh, yes on this, so they want to get rid of that, so we'll be voting yes. Proposition 3. Shall the preparation and selling of dangerous squizzle beets for consumption be a misdemeanor? 4. Shall Puss Cafe be this official? <laughs> be the official color of next year's festival of choice five shall outwelder possession of narcotics be punishable by death likely sentence death likely hmm. immediate complete use of all substances in possession yeah that is death likely Six, shall it be a felony to possess, sell, or export bipedry meat for globbering consumption? Seven, shall planet dweller deforestation of Wogies forest for dot herding be allowed? And finally, eight, shall marriages between ring dwellers and planet dwellers be recognized by the state? I hope you're aware that if you don't vote in today's election, we're allowed to kill you. <laughs> Maybe you should have told me that before. Like, you know. Right, if you're looking for someone to discuss the issues of the day with you, an ally of the council might be of assistance. They wear six pearls of wisdom on their skull. Now you're ready to participate in the election. Once you've decided on the issues, go to the voting booth just down the street. Happy voting! I certainly will. Uh, so that didn't update. I wonder if it will update if I read this. I can't read this again. Oh, that sucks. But we know that um, they voted yes in there. Does he have six? No, he's got four. Remember all the things we said we'd do in college? Not really. <laughs> Ah, yeah, the dreams of youth can be silly. Every vote counts. Guess I'm trapped here forever. Get married, raise a kid, vote every day and shut up. Yeah, every vote counts, but your voice will not be heard. What's this? The vocabulator reports you didn't participate in yesterday's election. Do they have one every day? Is there any truth truth to this, son? I was sick. You don't look sick to me. I'm feeling much better. Will you give me a word you're going to vote in today's election? No, sir. Yes, sir. How's your mother doing? She said to check his lit. Alright. Uh, none of my business. Buckley White. Would you like a quick les lesson in the politics of Votown? Uh, I guess. We're in Section 8, the administrative region of Votown. This is the democratic heart of our society and center of all red tape on Democritus. Here, everyone has a voice, everyone is heard. 
The only problem is people are dumb. We all know it, we all think it. So if the voting public is too dumb to make the best decisions, there needs to be a system to make sure they don't vote themselves into oblivion. That's where the High Council comes in. Each member of the council represents one of the eight sections of the Votown Ring. They are considered the wisest men on the planet and are the first to cast their ballots in a daily election. Since we're the ultimate de democracy, even a High Councilman's vote is the same as any citizen's. It counts as only one vote and is kept secret until after the election. On occasion, when the public votes differently from the council, the visible repercussions are often quite negative. That's why people tend to vote the way they think the council will vote. The High Council serves as the moral compass of our society. To make sure their opinions are an open secret, the council intentionally leaks its votes to the public through various channels. This way, they maintain an illusion of a free democracy while guiding the citizens at the same time. So in the end, people too dumb to make their own decision can feel like they're doing the right thing by voting like the council, as well as feel special for being part of a big secret. In fact, if you really want to know the way the council votes on an issue, look for allies of the council. They're always more than happy to spill the beans on council decisions. Allies of the Council have six pearls of wisdom, yes, we knew that, attached to their skulls as a symbol of their exaltedness. Look for them. And so here ended the lesson. Happy voting. Your system seems a bit flawed. Ah, a safe beast. Mm -hmm.